and E90 is still very pretty. Anyway. Time for oil change. So, uh, yeah. I was supposed to change my oil like 5 6,000 km. But the thing with this car, right? Touch wood, touch wood, is that it has been so reliable that I'm no longer sure whether I have exceeded the supposed mileage. it was 18,000 km I changed the transmission oil now I'm already at 56,000 km and uh, I think I should change the transmission oil as well it's about time hmm. <laughs> it's, it's just so reliable every single thing works yes some of the plastics you know BMW the, the seat belt the thing that guides the seat belt on the seats those plastics are crap they crack, all right, and um, they're just not very well designed. Some of the plastics, but thank God there are no sticky plastics inside here. And uh, these are the oils that I got from Camdu. Uh, ester based oil, Group Five. Uh, this car has been using it. It's good. And um, gotta go change my oil and to visit my yap DNA tuning. All right. The, the guys who tune my S4 and this car just gonna visit them because they say they have a new software for this transmission which would give it smoother response let's head off oh and that day I met a fan uh, near the family mart here and then he was like oh Bobby you're driving your BMW you still prefer this over the Aston then I told him oh I swap my cars around to drive but in full honesty, in terms of comfort, this beats the Aston. <laughs> Suspension, comfort and all that. Of course, driving feel, this one has no feel. I mean, the F-Series, gener F-Generation BMWs, uh, there's no steering feel. Right? Um, but in terms of the space that I get, see this car, the footwell. A lot of people, when, they, when you test drive cars, right? A lot, a lot of people actually miss out on judging a proper foot well. Okay, it 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 defines your comfort levels over a longer distance of drive. So, say for example, this car, the left foot rest, something I always talk about because the current generation C class and E class doesn't have that, regardless of which model you go for, and that affects the GLC, the GLE. Uh, it affects the AMG GT4 as well. So, not only just a proper footrest that this car has, but the height between the brake pedals and the throttle pedal and the footrest is a very perfectly judged height. Alright, it is about 20 cm apart or 15. So, from the footrest to the brake pedals and the throttle pedal, it is a, a height difference of maybe 15 to 20 cm. A very good uh, uh, height where I can relax both my feet and I can drive comfortably and there's enough room in the footwell, very wide footwell. And of course, in terms of the space here, of course, I would prefer if I have that handle over here, just like the passenger side, which on long distance drives allows me to slot my hand in, interchange between but that's a small complaint. Uh, my Audi RS6 uh, has arguably an even wider footrest area. However, the left footrest, in terms of the height of the footrest and the brake pedals, is a huge difference of maybe that much. So I have one leg almost stretching, another leg is like 
like that in the Audi. You know, there is a difference. So, um, one leg may be stretched out. on the, the left leg is stretched out, but the right leg is sort of like, you know, compressed because of the height of the, the, of the brake pedals and footrest. I'm not sure if that is adjustable anyway. Uh, whereas the Aston, the Aston has a proper height difference between the footrest and the brake pedal and the throttle pedal. However, the footrest is short. I have no idea how the Brits uh, designed that because uh, I have a size 11 feet and I'm not a tall person, right? I'm like 5 foot 11. Um, for Asian, maybe at the lower end of the average tall kind of height. But for a Caucasian, for an Anglo-Saxon, that's nothing. And I cannot understand why the footrest is so short. That means my feet cannot fully flatly step on it. I have to like slant it sideways in order to fit it within the height of the footrest. Uh, that's that's my sort of my only complaint about that. Of course, the whole car, the interior of the car is a lot tighter in the Aston. But the height of the armrest, the height of the armrest and all that is is, is really nice. You know, it's, it's tall so I can rest my, 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 my palm, my arms and everything. Anyway, too much talking. Let's go. Changing the oil. Oh, I like the name of uh, Mike Yap's place. So this is the place he's stationed at now. So if you want to do your DNA tuning, you can come over to this place. This place is also a tire shop, a big tire shop here at Sungai Long. I like the name. It's Evolution. Anything that calls itself Evolution is good. <laughs> anyway. Uh, initially, I wanted to change the oil and then do a car wash, but then now I got no time for car wash. I'll just do the oil change. And uh, so, Mike uh, from DNA Tuning, he has taken the reading of this car and gonna prepare the new software for the car. Then I'm gonna come back here for him to load it in. See how it goes. Uh, the car is still every bit as lovely as it is since day one. What a beautiful car. And I'm so, so, so glad I did not sell this car, man. Just so glad. Such a beautiful car. Wonderful, comfortable. One day, one day, one day I'm gonna give this car a very, very good interior refurbishment because it's showing its age now. See the seatbelts are dirty. It's a nine-year-old car. In a few months, it will be ten-year-old. But look at it, man. It's still so beautiful. Yeah. And these tires are wonderful. The uh, Extreme Contact Sport. I've been using them for two years. Wonderful, wonderful tires. Very, very grippy. They're comfortable and uh, these tires were made for US market for the casual enthusiast drag race you know for the Camaros and Mustangs during car meets and all that so in on the dry doing drag race and all that right they are grippier than PS4s but uh, but they are they, I think they are more comfortable in the, in the sense that they are not track oriented and all that all right, but well, they are fantastic tires. Yeah, my car is very, very dirty. So I'm gonna visit maybe Darren or see. All right. <coughs> I'll put the links to Mike's uh, YouTube channel below where he's done a lot of tunings and um, who knows, I might bring the RSX here. <laughs> Thank you.
of fresh oil. But to be honest, uh, changing oil at you know less than ten thousand km won't really show as big of a difference compared to if you change your oil at twenty thousand, right? Um, that is a good practice. It's the good practice to always give your car some. It's like you'll be perfectly fine if you shower twice a day instead of once a day, right? <laughs> you you'll be perfectly fine, <laughs> but the difference will be will be more significant, right? Compared to you shower once in the morning and then at night. Like myself, yeah. Anyway, um, it's always great to meet Mike Yap. You know, he runs DNA tuning in Malaysia, and uh, his tunes are very popular now. I mean, o over over the past uh, few years, uh, it's gotten really popular. I think the main reason is that their tune. Um, I think it's also the. Uh, more, as more and more Malaysians understand all these turbocharged European cars and all that, right? Um, we have we have become more and more. <laughs> how do I put this? Uh, uh, basically, we're bur bur we, we we know our stuff better now. So yes, those days. Oh, Vios, Vios, almost crashed into me. So fast. Some of these smart tags are they're not. The guy reversed and did a second stand, a second scan, and he is fine. Anyway, uh, yeah, those days you you got yourself like a, a Mark V GTI or something. And then there are those tuning softwares that gives you explosive output. You know, it, 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 there's such a huge difference when you drive your car. And they are focused, they are reprogrammed. The focus is to give an explosion of power for the customer. So that you, you are driving your car like that, and then you pay your money, they load their software, they tune your car, and then you got your car back, boom! Bomb! And then you're like, wow, you know? Now, after over the years, we have all understand that these kind of programming is gonna shorten your your the reliability of your car, right? The durability of your transmission, right? It of course it hurts the components because it just gives it like a full bore at one go. So consumers have gotten better understanding of well, these tuning programs and for what he does, DNA tuning, like I mentioned in some of my previous videos, if you haven't uh, watched it before, it retains the the linear curve of your car's, uh, sorry, it, it remains how your car reacts but on a higher level. So it retains that characteristic. You know, the build-up of power, uh, the way it pulls the revs, the way it behaves. It's just that at every single point, you are starting at a higher level. So, that in one way, uh, is more conservative, uh, it's less noticeable. But, it depends whether it's, it's, it's... This is less noticeable than in my S4. But my S4, I also experienced one of those so-called explosive output tuning programs, which is mad, right? Um, yeah. So, yeah, he said they have a new updated software for the transmission. So maybe that would give me a more, I don't know. I've, I've driven this car for so many years. So, can't wait for that. And he also showed me the, um, the charts for the Audi RS6. Now the RS6, I have no complaints whatsoever with this power because those kind of power levels are way beyond my 
driving capabilities, all right? Yes, it's rated 560 horsepower, the same as my Aston Martin, 560 horsepower, but the Aston Martin is naturally aspirated. So the power comes gradually with the revs. The RS6, for however, it it is just mad. The way it pulls that 560 horses is just after your throttle pedal goes past a certain threshold, all it does is just, you know, and everything just, just came gushing out and the horizon just, just got pulled towards you. It's crazy. So that's how the RS6 reacts. And um, given that it's a large displacement twin turbocharged car, um, there is a certain throttle lag in the initial phase from touching your throttle pedal I mean I just drove his Golf Mark 5 GTI oh fantastic throttle response just just like my S4 you know the kind where it feels like a highly strung NA where you touch the throttle pedal the car reacts even with a minor touch so I love that feeling and that feeling is not in the RS6 but it was in my S4 so I'm not sure if they are programmed will help eliminate some of that, you know, uh, which I'm not sure yet. Yeah, that would be for the RS6. So again, my approach to the RS6 is not to gain power, but to see whether it improves the, uh, the interaction from driver with the car. And uh, the car already have crazy amounts of power, right? 560 horsepower, so yeah, the RS6, 560 horsepower, 700 newton meters of torque, and uh, DNA tuning stage one, it will be at 650 horsepower and 850 newton meters of torque, which is crazy, immense. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'll do that. As for the Aston, I have no complaints with uh, the throttle response apart from the fact that from a standstill to initial moving, you actually need to touch the throttle pedal quite a bit. You know, it's not as what I mentioned earlier on, the highly strong type. Yep. Anyway, uh, yep, oil change done. The next thing I want to do to this car it's a gear oil change. Mm. Alright? That should give it a uh, good health. Yep. This car is just wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful car. And uh, hopefully I have the time to, you know, refurbish the interior, give it a new, fresh makeover. Uh, that should make things really nice. Maybe an M Sport steering wheel. <laughs> Alright guys, cheers!